Hello and welcome back. We're live from London in the Gfinity Arena. It's time for some more FIFA. We just saw our first quarter final. A huge gorilla taking on Zach and um, I mean, Chris, you were watching that. That was just incredible, incredible stuff, wasn't it? You know, it was something else. Um, much like yesterday, it almost seemed too easy for him at times. And maybe that's a compliment to how well he's playing at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure anyone can get near him. Well, I want to see someone come out and actually put him on the back foot and score a goal. And, you know, we've got, we've got plenty of time to, to talk about um, Huge Gorilla going forward because I'm sure he's not going to be going anywhere in this tournament. He's here to win it, to retain it. But we've obviously got another quarterfinal coming up now where we've got three left in total. The next one's going to be between uh, Tass and Ty. Two English guys who've been on the scene for a long time, known each other for a long time. Uh, it's quite, there's a friendship there. There's definitely a friendship. So um, I think they're professional enough to know that what happens on the, on the virtual pitch will stay on the virtual pitch. But that doesn't make it any less heated or intense in the actual booth when you're in there playing, does it? Still, friendship has to go for the, for the minutes you're playing FIFA. It has to not be about you know, friendship and about winning. Yeah, no, I think, well, they won't do anything on sportsmanship, I don't think, in this game. Um, and they're both, like, fan teammates. They've, they've been really good friends for the last three, four years. I, I reckon they're training buddies as well online. So that'll be hard for them as well. They'll both know each other's style. So this will be really 50-50. Have you got a prediction? Are you going to come down on either side of that 50-50? Um, no, uh, this yeah, this one's really hard to say. Maybe, I think, actually, Ty. Tie. Go, yeah, okay. I'm going to go tie. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go with tie. Let's take a look at the bracket so we can see where we actually are in the uh, knockout situation right now. So, obviously, Spencer or Huge Gorilla has gone through. We haven't updated that yet, but in that first quarter final, Huge Gorilla won it, so he's gone through. And this is Tass and Ty Walton, the second quarter final. The winner of this game will be playing Huge Gorilla in one of the semi finals. And obviously, we've got two more quarter finals to come. We actually caught up recently with Ty, who's a kind of veteran of the. Uh, of the FIFA competitive scene, still still a young guy, but he's been doing it for a while. He's been playing top quality FIFA for a while, and uh, we caught up with him to talk to him about his career. Hi, I'm Ty. I've been playing FIFA since around 2009, but as I started competitive in 11, I started winning various UK tournaments. I've dominated like the last few years, and then this year. I haven't really dominated as much. The top players usually play in a certain play style, and for the majority of this game, the top players have still been using that same play style, what we've used for the past four to five years. All the top players now, you don't really see at the top, and you know you have newcomers such as a huge gorilla who won the last tournament, um, Graham, Sean, players like that that have reached the top. The last few weeks I've been training, I've been trying to find out what works for me. I think with the introduction of Gfinity, FIFA's got you know a lot better over the last few years, because um, the only tournament we really had to look forward to was the FIFA Interactive World Cup. And during the past year or so, we've had plenty of Gfinity tournaments. And if I'm being honest, everyone in the world watches football. So in my opinion, FIFA should be at the top of that esports with League of Legends and Call of Duty and games like that. And I really feel that in the next few years or next few months even, with the new game coming out, big things can come. Ty talking there about the future of uh, esports and FIFA and of course his career. And like he said, started playing competitively in 2011. So four years of competitive FIFA. Not been playing quite as long as you have. Chris, but it's uh, but still quite a long time. Yeah, no, um, no. His, he came into the scene much like Hughes Gorilla, actually, um, in around 2011 and just started winning tournaments left, right and centre. He's probably one of the players that actually made me think, actually, I've got to call it a day here. Oh, really? so, yeah. hang, on <laughs> yeah. the, hang on the virtual boots. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. At least you don't have to wash the virtual boots. No, that's, yeah, just that's good. good point. Keep themselves clean. But Ty <laughs> is going to be playing now against Tass, so he could be going through. Uh, to a semi-final. He's talking about how he hasn't necessarily dominated on FIFA 15. He's got a chance to change that this tournament. If he can win this, then that'll be huge. He can win the whole thing. But he's got to be, uh, he's got to be Tass first, who's a very accomplished player. We can see them both in the booth there. Tass is on the left-hand side of your screen. Ty is on the right-hand side. Uh, they've got, obviously, similar team colours on because they're both representing Team Dignitas. So, either way, they're a winner from this match, aren't they? Yeah, no, Team Dignitas, they've always represented good FIFA players as well. Um, and... You know, um, this should be a tight game. Yeah, really tight. We've got, we've got Ty, who's sort of repping the five at the back formation. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. I, I actually think it's quite a clever strategy, and I'm surprised more people haven't used it. I, I think it's not necessarily the most popular of strategies because uh, people might look at it as a maybe a defensive lineup. But if you think about the way the formation rules work in the tournament, which is that you can't actually move 
down a formation, which essentially means you can't move from a four at the back to a five at the back. You're not allowed to become more negative in your shape, but you can move up. So you can go from a five to a four, from a four to a three. So by starting at five at the back formation, you give yourself a lot of options. If it goes to plan and you score a goal, you can use that five at the back to help maintain that, that lead. If it's not going to plan, you need to go more attacking, you can change up and go more attacking. But if you're not starting with a five, you can't ever use a five. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. But um, I think Ty, when, when you see him play with this 5-2-1-2, two, two, it's definitely not defensive. He makes no, it no, no, a no. way that his fullbacks go forward. Um, so I think this is genuinely his favourite formation to, to kick off the game. He does, I don't think he does it to expose sort of them rules. I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think if you keep a lookout on the radar at the bottom of the screen, the sort of mini, mini map, you can actually see the formations in place and how they actually work. And uh, uh, Dave pointed out yesterday that his five at the back actually most of the time looks more like a four because you have fullbacks going up the pitch. Uh, but Ty, uh, but so Ty's team, we sort of discussed it there, five at the back, Messi, Ronaldo, both starting in there. But with Tass's team, we have what is probably the best team on paper in the entire tournament. The only person using legends is using three, which is the most you can use. He's, he's using that rule to the, mo the best he can. And he's also got... Ronaldo in there. He's also got Robin in there. It's a, it's, a, it's a hell of a team. We'll get it up on the screen as soon as we can uh, once it, they go into the games. They're just getting things set up there. So, Would you agree that Tassi's team is probably the, the best in terms of stats? Yeah, no, I think so. Definitely. V Vieira and Clive just add something that no one else has got. Just that legend addition. Um, you know, most players have Ronaldo and Messi. We've seen that a lot and sort of will fill their team with other BPL players. Something we should talk about as well is one thing that Tass was doing yesterday, which we didn't see anyone else do to the same effect, is scoring a lot of headers. I think he scored six goals in his first uh, two games. And I think four of them were headers, um, most of which were with Cloyver, one with Vieira. So he's definitely using that uh, a kind of technique which was much more popular in FIFA 14 headers, crossing and whatnot. Uh, not been viewed as as effective in FIFA 15, but Tass has found a way of using it to his advantage and he's absolutely loving it. Yeah, no, it, like you say, it's, it's not a great way. Um, or many, many players don't play that way in FIFA 15, but yeah, he's found a way to score a lot of headers. We're kicking off here now. TMT versus T in the top-hand corner. It's Tass versus Ty. Winner is going to be playing huge gorilla in the semi-final in a huge game. That's, uh, they don't even want to think about that obstacle right now and how they might go about beating huge gorilla because right now they've got to get themselves through a quarter-final first. We've got Ty in the Brazil kit and we've got Tass in the blue strip. So you're going to come down for Ty in this one, are you? You think he's going to win it? Yeah, no, I quite like this 5-2-1-2 two two, um, formation. I'm surprised. Not many other players have tried it. It really does suit that counter-attack initially. And Ty nearly come close in that sort of, in the first days with a long shot there. No early goal in this one, like we saw with uh, Huge Gorilla's quarter-final. Let us know in the comments. This is an interesting one, because it is a really tight game. I can't necessarily tell between the two, so I'd like to see what you guys think on Twitch, who you think is going to win this one. Let us know, are you Team Tass or your Team Ty? Alba on the ball for Ty. That left wing back spot is his. He's going to take it out of play there, though. Not the most uh, cool of, of possession with Alba there. Carter 574 says he's, he's, he's with Ty. He thinks Ty's going to win this one. Uh, Harry Eden 100 is going with Tass. Barrage Tricks is going with Tass. Uh, Cronis 1337 says Ty. Kappa HD says Tass. It's quite even, actually. A lot of Tass, a lot of Ty. No one can tell between these two. Who's going to get the first blow? Who's going to get the first goal? Messi on the ball here for Ty. Loses the ball. Runs into the brick wall that is Patrick Vieira. Thomas Muller. Informed Thomas Muller, I do believe. Uh, goes back to and it's Vieira. Vieira back heel to Cohen Trow. Interesting choice at left wing back there. Sergio Ramos to Boateng. To the Dijkmaier. The silver right back. We've seen him used a lot, along with Van Arnholt. Two silver fullbacks. Most people have used, actually, at least one of them. Muller here inside to Costa. That's Rui Costa, the legend. Ronaldo, can he bring it down? Cristiano Ronaldo! The finesse effort was almost in that top right-hand corner, but he hasn't found the back of the net. Still nil-nil. Yeah, no, you've seen already in these early stages what kind of game this will be. Um, both players aren't very direct. They'll try and keep the ball, work that perfect position for a shot, um, and then go for it. Both, both players are very smart in their sort of you know, approach play. 
Robin trying to get that ball. And you can see Patrick Kluivert in the middle getting ready to make his run. If they can find his head like they did in the uh, group games for TAS, then he's going to be feeling very conf confident he can get some goals because Kluivert in the air was just something something to behold yesterday. Great boy from, ball from Kluivert to Ronaldo. Ronaldo, he's got eyes. Oh, that's dangerous sliding in the box like that. He's not clearing it properly either, Ty. But he's managed to uh, hold him off. No goal for Tass. But a sliding tackle in the box that could have easily resulted in a penalty there. Yeah, a really dangerous play from Ty all around. He keeps losing the ball on the, in this sort of left-back position as well. Um, and then the pass after that slide was really dangerous. Um, and almost as if Ty needs to actually focus here and because he's going to make a mistake in a second if he carries on this way. Messi playing the ball out to Gareth Bale on the left-hand side. Bale comes inside, ball in for Ronaldo on the header. He's just as good in the air as Kluivert, I'd say, in this game. Uh, Ty not able to find him, though, looking very uh, concentrated there in the action. Cohen trail. Going for a switch. It's a lovely switch to Robin. First touch left a little bit be to be desired, but he's got away with it. Dyke might, it's a dangerous pass, but it's mopped up at the back by Boateng. Casillas is going to go walkabouts. He needs to make sure his player wins this for us. He's going to keep us going to be out of position, but he's okay. It's a nice ball. Almost like an up and under rugby pass, that one. Very high. Ronaldo goes back to Lionel Messi. Messi looking for the ball for Ronaldo. Cut out by Ramos. Here's Patrick Vieira. Ex Arsenal, ex Juventus, ex Man City. Legend. Tass is an Arsenal fan, and it's no coincidence that two. Uh, well, in this, in this, in this instance, he's got um, Vieira. But in last uh, season one, played like a legend championships. He had Perez as well. A couple of ex-Arsenal players in there. Ball in, chance. It's cut out by a tie. Here's Messi to Bale. Bale oh, doing very well in the middle here, creating space where there seemed to be none. Squaring it over to Perez. Really good player, Perez. Very affordable all-rounder quality CDM or CM in there for you. Gets himself a corner. Yeah, both players struggling to get the ball forward at the moment. They only have like three players in attacking position, so when they do get the ball forward, it almost feels like their wide players or their central players are actually isolated with the ball. Ball in. It's going to fall to Machu on the edge of the box. I'm not sure if he's the man you want there. Kadira, though, he's a little bit better at striking them. Bale is definitely someone you'd like to hit one from that area, but he's not able to turn and uh, he's taken away now by Tass. Switching it over to Cristiano Ronaldo on the left-hand side. He's got space, but Bale's chasing him. We know Bale's got, got a lot of pace. Vieira. Cohen trail. Again, Taz just taking his time in this approach play. Not making any mistakes. And doing really well at sort of this ball retention, but hasn't actually sort of made it pay so far. Ronaldo. Probably onto the ball very well. They're looking for Gareth Bale, an aerial through ball cut out by the centre back. I think it was actually Dijkmaier, the one they had on the right back. There's Tass, equally concentrated, eyes firm on the screen. Almost half time in this first leg, nil nil still. I thought it was going to be a tight match between these two. You know, definitely it is. These two are very much defensive players. They, um, Robin, was... ball in! Oh, he do not want it to land on Kluivert's head there. Luckily, he managed to resist it. It's Rui Costa. It's because the, the last few FIFAs have been so defensive. They still have that game style sort of, you know, written in there in their own like script almost. Yeah, they had, I mean, it could go either way when two kind of, I wouldn't say they're defensive, but two kind of sort of possession-based players come against each other because you could go that there's lots of action because they're equally equally good at, at, at finding gaps in, in tight defences, but it could go the other way that there's not a lot of action. So, I mean, right now it's gone on the latter. It's nil-nil, first half of the first leg, but there's plenty more time for, for some goals and for some action here. Ty just making some changes to his team. The front three of Bale, Ronaldo and Messi, Perez and Kadira in the middle two, and then the back five doing well for him so far. No, no shots on target, actually, in that entire first half. Hopefully that will change 
in the second half. He's made that substitution we saw him do before. What is his thinking? I need to talk to him about that. Because the second time at least we've seen him sub De Gea on for Casillas. Now he can't have seen anything from Casillas that he wasn't happy with because there was barely any action in front of goal. Why is he making that sub, Chris? No, it is a strange substitution. Um, I can only. Maybe Casillas has better chemistry, but I think Taz's plan with BPL players at the back anyway. So I'm not sure if. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really understand it. Not, what, well, if he's playing with BPL players at the back, that makes sense, obviously, because De Gea is. Yeah, that would be the opposite way around. Yeah, it, yeah. it makes sense to start De Gea in that instance. You're right, you are right. Um, well, he's got Jordi Alba at left back. Um, he's got Varane. Now, it looks like they're oh, more sorry, BBVA. No, yeah. yeah, so that would make sense. He's bringing De Gea on to avoid the chemistry, but he obviously can't do it before half time because that's one of the rules. No subs before half time, unless the game goes to a third match decider. In which case you can make the subs as soon as you want to. Kadira. DeMarcos, the right wing back, getting very far forward. You look at that radar now, you can see it's a back four. DeMarcos is just contributing in the midfield now. Cohen Trail. Portuguese left wing back here, or left back here for Tass. Now down the left hand side is Portuguese compatriot. Coming out to get it into the box. He's doing. Oh, he's looking for Clover. He just hasn't connected with one yet. Muller can strike them. Good block, almost a handball there by Matthew, I thought. Still not a shot on target, unfortunately, and both players again defending really well in this game so far. Tass is trying his best to uh, connect with a Cloyver ahead of him. He just can't get the delivery spot on. Yeah, I think we saw how um, sort of efficient he can be with Cloyver in that Sean Allen game before. Um, yes. I think he scored a hat trick in one of the games. He did, you're right. He scored five goals. Three for Cloyver, one for Vieira, one for Ronaldo, I think. Yeah, it's a great performance from Tass. Ronaldo on the left hand side. Dispossessed by Varane. DeMarcos. Ramos. Varane. Ramos. Ty keeping possession, happy to do so for now. I think it could be one goal that wins this game, you know, the complete contrast to the uh, huge gorilla match that came previously. I mean, if these guys do come up against huge gorilla, the, the chance of them keeping a clean sheet against him is minimal. So they need to be able to score goals. Great ball down the line, actually hugging that left hand line. Can we see a delivery here from Ronaldo, is it? No, I'll be really interested to see how one of these two does match up against huge gorilla, actually. Um, I think if one of these two go up against him, um, then we could find someone who can actually eventually beat him. Tass losing the ball here to Ty. Ty with a chance. Now on the ball, he's hitting one! Oh, that's the first real chance that could have gone in. But still off target. De Gea was not tested. You know, I spoke about sportsmanship before the game, but it almost feels that this is a bit too sporting. Neither player really <laughs> almost wants to score a goal against the other. Someone's going to have to win, guys. Sorry, you can't both go through. Them's the rules. Muller looking for a through ball. Cut out by Ramos, who plays it. Lovely spread of the ball to uh, Lionel Messi. Goes back to DeMarcos. Very fast right back slash right wing back here. Bale. Perez. Ronaldo. Ball for Bale. He's on his own. He's going to have to do it on his own. He's going to have to hold it up for a little bit. Bale. Oh, it's nice twisting and turning. Is he going to pass it? Here we go. Perez. To Valencia. Central midfielder. Lovely ball for Messi. Push down to Ronaldo. It's good defending from Vieira getting in there like we've seen him do so many times in the Premier League over the years. Ronaldo. Ramos. Cohen Trout. Loves that little step over, doesn't he? A little ball roll. Yeah, I know, both players. So sort of just using their sort of almost delicate skill moves in their sort of approach play. Muller, the ball for Robin. Brings it down with a lovely first touch. Good tackle, and he's kept it on well. Need a few more chances in this game. Yeah, what, what I haven't seen so far is both players are defending quite deep. You haven't seen many times, like you, like you saw in the Gorilla match, there was. A lot of occasions where players would chip, use chip through balls um, and have a player running in behind. Um, there just hasn't, there's just not that space in this game. Both players defending the space rather than closing down and getting players out of position. 
Seeing some potential changes here from uh, Ty. He's brought Messi off for Daniel Sturridge. Looks like he's thinking about bringing Remy on as well. Who's he going to go with? Is he going to make the change? Surely he's not going to take Ronaldo off. That would be tantamount to vandalism. He's thinking about it. He's going to go Sturridge up top. Ronaldo on the left. Bale on the right. Any other personnel changes? Or is he going to leave it at that? Griezmann. Griezmann came on for for uh, Bale there. Okay. So he's got Griezmann and Sturridge on for Bale and Messi. He's gone with a little bit of fresh legs for the last 10 minutes of this match. Will it work for him? Let's find out. Perez to Kadira. Kadira turns. He's tackled with Ramirez. And now Muller. Atas. Kluivert. Vieira. Back to Kluivert. Kluivert. For Muller. Nice first touch, but he ran into trouble. Matthew doing well to regain possession for Ty. Switching it to Ronaldo. Ramos. It's big ball over for Griezmann, who's come off the bench. He wins the header. He's, he's not the tallest of uh, players, but he does well there to get up. Griezmann whipping it in. Could be a goal. It's a good punch from the keeper. It had to be, and it was. Kadira gets the ball now. Goes to Perez. Perez, ball. Ronaldo, goal. Got to be. That's a big goal in this game. We're not going to see a lot of them, I don't think. But he's got one. He's now 1-0 to tie against his buddy Tass. Five of the back formation. He's beating the legend team of Tass. Yeah, a really important goal in this game. And it's going to be really hard for Tass now. Tie. Well, but both of these players know how, how to defend the lead. Um, and really good pressure from Ty already. He, he got the, um, the chance with the cross initially. Taz tr um, failed to clear it. And a nice through ball into the box and good first time finish. Very good finish from Ronaldo, wasn't it? I think um, Taz, does, is, he, is he likely to switch to like a three at the back formation in, um, in order to try and exploit the five at the back, you know, really pump up players up the pitch? Is that something we'd like to see from him? Yeah, no, I think he would eventually. I'm not sure if he'll go the three at the back, but... Um, yeah, he'll have to gamble at some point, but I imagine he'll just be happy keeping it tight for now. It's the full-time whistle on that first leg, so we're halfway through this quarter-final. Tass is 1-0 down, and there's Tassler looking a little bit dejected, but um, he's still got 90 minutes. He knows one goal is, is all he needs to get back in this thing. 88th-minute goal from Ty there, not a nice time to concede, but it's the equivalent of a goal before half-time, isn't it? Perez getting man of the match, uh, playing very well in there for... Ta tie, sorry. So um, you think, you, know, you said tie before the game. Yep. He's got the 1-0 lead. You think he's going to hold on to it? Yeah, no, happy with that. Um, no, I think he might. Um, although, to be fair, like Taz has an amazing team. He has the better team. and He just needs those legends to step up. There was quite a few crosses, particularly in the first half. Maybe three cross attempts. If any one of them had fallen on Cloyberg's head, you're probably going to get a goal. He's got to just do that once, and it's one all. Yeah, no, very good point. But I think in this game... Because there's so, such a low percentage you'll see from sort of scoring, cr you know, crossing in and heading. Um, yeah, no, it's just how lucky he's going to be, really, with that. Well, tactic. I mean, it seems like it's a system of his based on how he played in the group stage. He was scoring uh, a lot of headers, and um, if that's something we're going to expect to see again, then I think it, I think it could be because I think he's got the personnel in there. He's got Cloyver. He was particularly good from corners as well. Vieira got his goal from a corner. Uh, header as well. So, yeah, it's just a question of whether that is an actual strategy or whether that was just something that was working for him yesterday and he was just going with it for a little bit. Um, it, it does seem like an area with Cloyver up top. I mean, he's not slow by any means. He's got decent pace, but he's not a Ronaldo up top. He's not a, the man in the middle that's just going to run through people. Um, so he needs to use his strengths, which is his strength, and his uh, power and his heading particularly is really good. You know, we've seen him used much more as a target man with the ball in front of the defence. But um, when you're looking for that through ball over the top, which is, to be fair, it's not Taz's style anyway. No. Um, but he's not going to give you what Ronaldo gives you or what Bale gives you. There they are in the booth again there. You've got Tass on the left-hand side. Ty on the right-hand side in the hoodie. Ty 1-0 up going into the second leg, which is about to kick off. They're just going to make some quick changes. Uh, Ty likes to make some changes positionally at the start of each game. Um, he's just going to move Messi with Bale. Looks like he's going to go bail up top in this one. Ronaldo on the left, Messi on the right. That's an interesting strategy. A lot of players prefer to use Ronaldo as the front man up top. 
The Big Bald Spot is asking us on uh, Twitch if we look at the chat. No, we do not look at the chat, Big Bald Spot. Never look at it. 1-0 on aggregate, going into the second leg. Okay, we're kicking off. Can Ty keep his lead and go through in the semi-final where he's going to have to face a whole different prospect, which is Hugh Gorilla, the reigning champion, the guy that just scored 10 goals in his quarter-final. Uh, is he going to be able to take him on? That's another question for another day. Well, not another day, today. Just a little bit of time <laughs> from now. Um, but Tass is still standing in Ty's way. He'll try and get a goal back. There's every chance he can. He's got three legends on the pitch, Cloyvert, Vieira and Rui Costa. And they'll be vying to try and create something that upsets the odds and gets him back in the match. Yeah, well, Tass is definitely capable of this. His, um, I think form-wise, he's been playing very well online. Um, with a few like F FUT online qualifiers to his belt. I think, I think he's like top four or five. Um, so he, yeah, he's been one of the guys to watch. And Ty, it's almost like people have forgotten that he's an amazing FIFA player just because he hasn't won a tournament in quite some time. To Marcos, to Bale. Well, I was going to look down the line for Messi. He's not going to be able to get there though. Sergio Ramos is standing in his way. Casillas switches to Cone Trow. He's uh, still got Casillas on, not brought De Gea on in, the la in, that, in that first game. He did do it, didn't he, at half-time? Yeah. yeah, so he probably will be doing it again at half-time again uh, when he can allow the substitutions. Yeah, that will be for the chemistry. And I think um, I actually prefer De Gea. I, I, like, I think he's the best BPL player um, in this game, well, especially his team of the season card. Um, and I think sort of reflexes and shot stopping his stats in them departments help a lot more, whereas other keepers have, say, better kicking um, and things that I don't think matter as much. Kadira. Clover on the ball here. Losing it. And at this point, you can see that there's literally just the four there. It's a five at the back in the yellow kit for for Ty, but when they're actually together, they're almost always in a four, and there's always an attacking wing-back. He has them set to, to attack. And it's only right now you can see five of them together. As soon as he gets the ball for a little bit, you can see DeMarcos has drifted into a midfield position. You know, it's a very smart tactic from Ty. It kind of turns into a 4-3-1-2 when he's going forward, so the other wing-back turns into, like, yeah, that, that winger on attacks, um, and the other two segments will just shift across, and you just won't have anyone on that opposite wing, um, which is fair enough. If, you, if you're not going to switch the play, then, then it's a sort of very valid tactic. Clover to Ronaldo. Ronaldo, Clover can pick that up. I think he will. Yes, he can, but there's no one in there to deliver it to. And he's lost the ball, and it's going to be a throw in to Ty. 1-0 up still, 21 minutes into this second leg. As things stand, Ty will be going through to the semi-final to face our reigning champion, a huge gorilla in what will be an epic match. Dave, our other co-caster, did say that he thought Ty was one of the few people that could give huge gorilla a game. And uh, everyone else in the tournament will be hoping that he can take him down. Because huge gorilla, no one wants to face him right now. You know, I agree with that. He's definitely the man to beat. Um, he's definitely sending messages. If, if I was sitting in the booze right now, I'm not sure if I'd want to win this game. Well, obviously, I would, but... If you, if you know you've got to face a huge gorilla after the, the, just the form he's in at the moment. Well, that was a cheeky dink in there, but not enough on it to get to Robin. And now Ty can counter with Ronaldo on the left. Lost the ball there. Robin does well tracking back to get it. Rui Costa. Oh, almost a lovely ball for Cuiver. Nice from Messi to Ronaldo. Ronaldo he goes inside, he goes around one player, looking for the ball for Bale. Bale brings it down. Going to be a goal. Should have been a goal, really. On that left peg of Bale, you'd have put your house on him. Yeah, I think um, it was a little bit unfortunate he didn't um, take that ball square on. He was a, li a little bit of an angle, and I think that affected um, the outcome. Messi. To Bale. Can't get it past him. Oh, it's a lovely skip over from Cohen Trail, but he wasn't able to keep it under, under control, and it's gone for a throw in. Got a little bit of an injury to Rui Costa, I'm sure he'll shake it off. Although he's about 48 years old now, so uh, it's hard to shake him off when you get to that age, so I'm told. Might need more physio time. Ronaldo. 
cuts in. He, he, could, he could strike one, you know. He's, he's made a lot of inroads there. Bale's going to get it. He's going to try and get it on that left foot, though, isn't he? Or is he? Is, oh, it's good. I thought Ronaldo could have just struck one just outside the box. Yeah, no, originally he had that chance, but when, it, when he was out wide, I thought he also had the square ball available just for a nice cut back into the area. Ty really um, using that sort of switch through ball quite a lot with his opposite winger. Corner here for Ty. Bale, can he whip it in? He can do. Ronaldo, header. He's saved by Casillas, who will probably be getting subbed off in about seven minutes of FIFA time for De Gea. But he'll be happy he's kept a clean sheet in both his appearances so far, Casillas. A baked Donut has asked if they're allowed to use Team of the Season cards. Yep, they can use Team of the Season. We've seen quite a few of them used already. We're going to see a goal here, surely. How has that not ended up in the back of the net? It's a penalty. It's a penalty for Ty. Chance for him to double his lead to 2-0. Yeah, I think it looks like the keeper giving away the penalty there. A little bit unfortunate for Taz. Barrage trick saying this game is tactically amazing to watch. I couldn't agree more. Ronaldo strikes it. Where's he going to go? Down the middle. It's a teaser. 2-0. And Tass rubbing his hand to his forehead there. Looking quite forlorn. 2-0 down. He needs goals. He needs two of them, at least. You know, this must be a little bit demoralising for Taz because he has such the better team as well. So just to, you know, just how good a performance this is from Ty. He has a a really weaker team than Taz. The thing is, though, I mean, I think... Don't, oh, that's great. That's great play from Bale. Sure, you're not going to get another one. The thing is with the Legends is I think some people get a little bit um, kind of preoccupied by the fact that they're Legends, which makes them rare and obviously expensive. But Ronaldo and Messi are probably the two best players in the game. And uh, Ty has them both in his lineup, And Taz only has one of them. So what, I, I, I personally would prefer to play with Messi than Cloyd, but I think there's an appeal of playing with a Legend. For sure, and I, I, I love doing it. It's very fun. In terms of if you've got a game you have to win, I'm going to back Messi on that one. So yeah. I actually wouldn't say the test team is very good because I think he's got team of the season, Robin, uh, team of the year, Robin. Sorry, uh, he's got some really nice cards, but and, and it's definitely up there. But I don't think you can do better than Ronaldo and Messi starting together. Personally, I'd have them both up front together, two up front. That's just that's a game changer. You know, I think in real life, definitely that combination. But I just, I just don't think Messi's that effective on um, FIFA. I, I'd actually prefer Bell over Messi. I would agree with you on another game, but on this year, I'd say Messi steps up to the plate. Bale. Looking for Ronaldo. Oh, it's a good tackle there from Dijkmaier. And it's half-time in this second leg. Currently 2-0. Not even a shot registered for Tass there. He's going to have to change that in this second half if he's going to stay in this tournament because he's 2 0 down as things stand. Uh, look at those ratings 5.5 for Ronaldo in that half, 5.9 for Costa. Not what you want to be seeing. He needs Kluivert, he needs Ronaldo, he needs Robin to step up to the plate and get him some goals. You know, really disappointing performance, really, all around from Taz. So just to have no shots, I don't think he had many in the first game either. Um, so you've got to think what his strategy is going to be now. He, he'll have to gamble at some point, and there's no better player to, to pick his mistakes off now when you know, Taz will have to come forward, attack, press higher, um, and Ty's just going to soak all that pressure up. Marco Royce coming on for Rui Costa. He's dropped one of his legends. He's not been happy with his performance. He's going to go with the German instead in there. Taz on the ball here. Bale. Robin, Vieira, Robin, can he whip it in? He does so. Ronaldo, oh. Ramos on the ball. Squares it to Jerome Boateng. Dyke Meyer at right back. Is he going to look to whip one in from there? Or is he going to play it safe into Thomas Muller? Muller. Switches to Robin. It's well taken down. Can he get it into the box? Maybe on Ronaldo's head. Cloyver still in there as well, of course. You've got both of them up together now. Deadly. Robin, can he deliver? He's going to put it in there. Ronaldo! Oh, he just can't connect. Cloyver! Oh, that was a huge chance. First shot of the game. 
He just can't connect with uh, the headers right now, can he, Tass? No, not at all. Um, and especially, he's struggling getting, cl you know, getting Clivert on the end of them headers. Um, but that was a great chance for Taz. I just feel he hurried that shot a little bit, tried to take like, the half volley. Um, I think he could have just um, gave it an extra second and just sort of drilled that into the near post. I think now Ty's making some changes. What's he doing here then? Just getting some fresh legs on, perhaps? Possibly. We saw him do it in the last game where he brought, was it Sturridge on? Yeah, I think so he brought Griezmann and Sturridge on, didn't he, last game? For Messi and Bale. Did he do the same thing here? Looks like he's not actually doing anything. He's just toying with us. Yeah. Cohen Trail's gone off for Marcelo. Interesting substitution. Is that going to be a key thing when you're trying to chase a game? Changing your left back going to have that big a difference? I don't know. I'm... Maybe if uh, if Taz is switching to wing backs, maybe um, it, you know it depends. Taz does um, like to have a slow approach, so he will use his full backs a lot. Maybe um, Cantrell was lacking fitness, so I can see why he'd make that change. Oh no! He's tried to switch it at the back, and he's hit the head of his centre back. Got away with it. Demarcos. Bale. Cut out by Vieira. Tass needs to be doing that more if he's going to get back in this game. Just over half an hour left. He needs two goals. Dijkmaier, the German right back into Vieira. Vieira, can he create something here? Can he be the catalyst that gets this team going? Robin on the left-hand side. Yes, plays in Marcelo, the substitute. Marcelo delivers. If he'd got an assist, then it would have been a great impact. Muller goes to Vieira on the edge. Paggio Vieira. Pass went awry and now chance to break for Ty. If he gets a goal now, it will end it. 3-0 will be too much for Tass to come back from in this time of the game. Really smart defending there by Ty, actually. Um, I think we could all see that the guy on the edge of the box was available, but Ty just guarded him really well and um, made him sort of hurry a through pass into the oh, box. Ty's absolutely destroyed the defensive uh, side of Tass's game there, but he couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. It's a tight angle to try and score from. And Tass can keep going now, but he does need a goal soon. You can already see there's a few more men getting forward now for Tass. Well, keeper's going to get So now we'll see the switch. So Bale, and I'm guessing Messi will also come off yep, for Griezmann. Getting the fresh legs on there. If he does get a chance, because he knows Tass is going to they have to press him now. So if he does get a chance to, to uh, you know, counter-attack, he's going to have fresh legs that can exploit his defenders and do well. But only the one shot on target for Tass, you know. He needs two more shots, at least, to get back in this game. He's not even had two shots on target this game, so he's not looking hopeful. And I think there's one more goal in this game. You'll definitely see them, them wingers from Ty be used as outlets now, just to, just to sort of get the time down. He'll, he'll run the ball into he'll start you know doing that now, running the ball into corners, um, just going for crosses, getting corners maybe. Is that frowned upon the whole keep it in the corner thing in the competitive scene, or is it quite is it quite accepted? I think it's quite accepted, um, especially if if you've been in the scene so long. You'd have, you'd have been tuning up and maybe not done that and someone will make a comeback. It, it can be so easy to get comebacks in this game. Yeah. I don't, it's not. It's quite rare on this game, admittedly, but um, definitely in past FIFAs, you know, it, it can hurt if you don't do that. Ronaldo to Palacio, who's come off the bench for Tass. Dijkmaier, nice poor pass. It's a chance for Ty to end it once and for all. Sturridge running down the left-hand side. Velassi tracks back, using that energy that he's got off the bench to uh, catch up with his fellow substitute, Sturridge. Dijkmaier on the ball for Tass. Into Robin. Robin needs to play a good pass for Kluivert. Kluivert nods it down beautifully. Can Ronaldo get the shot away? It was a lovely move, that. It just couldn't fall nicely for Ronaldo. And Ty keeping possession quite smartly. And Taz, this would just frustrate Taz. Mm. 
Vieira. To Royce. Needs to make something happen really soon. Ten minutes left on the game for Tass. He's going to be crashing out of the tournament, which will be surprising as he went through as a group winner, let's remember, and Ty went through as a runner-up. Ball for Ronaldo. Ty nods it down. Oh, he's got there. Oh, Griezmann just couldn't get there, unfortunately. Can Tass get a goal? It needs to be now. Disappointment from Taz giving the ball away so easy there, and I predict he won't get a ball back for another five minutes. Just a possession game from uh, Ty now, as you can see things out, you're saying. Yeah, although uh, lucky there, like Taz has put, put a bit of pressure on and got the ball back. Chance? I think it's a soft nice. side, maybe. He's just going to hold on to that ball, wind yeah. that clock down, wait for the ref to make him kick it. And, uh, yeah, I think it's game over here. 87 minutes on the clock. He might even go and get a third. Ronaldo loses it. Can Tass get one? It has to be now for him to have any chance. Ball down the line for Ronaldo. Can he get it in there? Whips it in for Cloyver. Those headers just haven't fallen for him today. Chance for Robin. Robin. Robin can't make the shot. And I think that's game over. It's just the difference between today and yesterday. Yesterday, the headers were falling on Cloyver's head and in the back of the net. Today, I don't think he's connected with a single one. Yeah, I agree completely. I it's just this game. Um, I think direct three balls over the top are really beneficial in this game, and crossing it in oh. is so hard to perfect. He's hit a shot there from distance from Balassio. Slightly desperate that, I think, in an attempt to try and get a shot, but uh, he's going to be going from the tournament. Tass, with our best wishes, he's a good player, regular player in the G4D tournament, always does well but uh, not going to be going further in the quarter-final stage. He's going to just miss out on taking any cash home, of course, which is a shame. There's the final whistle. Ty has won it. Tass not happy and understandably uh, winning the group, thinking he's probably going to do well in this tournament, but being knocked out. Ty is through to the semi-final. He's going to have a really interesting matchup against Huge Gorilla, who has been the bookies' favourite from day one, and he's uh, done nothing to uh, throw off that suggestion. His performance is winning his, his quarter-final. Ten goals. You know, how's Ty going to compete with that? You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Ty's kept a clean sheet there over two legs, and to be honest, Taz hardly had, you know, didn't have many shots. So if he can, I think it will be a lot harder against Huge Gorilla. Um, of course. But yeah, if Ty gets one goal up in that game, it's going to be really interesting to see how how Huge Gorilla copes with that ball possession from Ty. That's what I think we're calling out for, is someone to take the game to Huge Gorilla, put him on the back foot, because every time he's scored early goals, particularly in that quarterfinal, both his quarterfinal legs went one up in the first minute, yeah. more or less. So if he does that again, we know he can control the game. If someone scores against him and says, hang on, mate, I'm not here to make up the numbers, I'm going to take you on, then I want to see how he responds. That's going to be interesting. But your prediction for that game would be a who? Um, I think Huge Gorilla is still favourite. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, that... <laughs> That first goal was so big in that game. Yeah, I mean, and, did it, and the fact that he did it in both legs, I think, was, was huge. But let's talk a little bit about Tass leaving the tournament. Uh, will he be disappointed to go out the quarterfinals? Yeah, no, he'll be really dis disappointed. I know how passionate Tass is about this, you know, about sort of the, the whole FIFA scene growing um, and his involvement in that. You know, he sees himself as one of the, the top three players in the UK. And, you know, to be fair, over the last couple of years, he has been. He's been winning tournaments consistently. Um, so he'll be really disappointed with that. What could he change? What could he have done better, do you think? I mean, he had a very good team. We talked about his team being probably the strongest on paper. What, was, what went wrong for him in that match? Um, I just think he didn't have a plan B that much. Um, you know, he just went for the crosses. And, and when that wasn't working, maybe he could have switched it up a bit. Um, but it's so hard when you've trained that way, and it has, you know, it must have been working for him online. Um, but no, I think maybe it's just a bit unlucky, actually. We've got some replays uh, from the match now playing. You can see here, uh, this was this first opportunity goal there from Ty. Nice finish from Ronaldo, near post, roof of the net. Um, I mean, it was just solid. It took a while to come. 88 minute goal it was registered as, and uh, in that first leg, which was a stalemate for the majority. But then from that point on, Tass never really got back into it, did he? No, not at all. Um, and yeah, no, re really smart pass from Taz. You don't see that very often, uh, the sort of first time shot from that kind of angle into the near post. No, and, it, yeah, and I think with Ronaldo, you've got someone that can finish that. I think with other players, you wouldn't necessarily see a competitive person take that shot on. I think with Ronaldo, you can pretty much shoot from most angles. Another replay coming up here. This was the uh, 
the second goal, I think, was 1 0 up, uh, just about to hit half time in the second game, gets a penalty, and uh, obviously he dispatched it past the keeper, put Tass 2 0 down, and it was just all she wrote from this point onwards, really. I'm not sure if that was given as a foul by the keeper or by Boateng there, um, or, or a mixture of the two. He's caught up in some kind of sandwich there, Ronaldo. But uh, he did score the penalty, made it 2 0, and uh, yeah, it was all she wrote. And he went down the middle, I believe. Yeah, it did. It was a teaser. He obviously knew that Tass was going to dive. Again, that maybe that comes from them playing together quite a lot. Yeah, no, possibly. Um, and we saw there a tactic that Ty used quite a lot, where he, he had the ball with one winner, winger, came inside, and with that sort of get behind instruction that he uses on his wingers, um, he goes for that sort of you know, that switch through ball um, to get his players in behinds. Um, and I think that's a really effective tactic, and maybe one for Huge Gorilla to note. How do you think that Huge Gorilla will respond to the five at the back? Um, well, I think with five at the back, you've got a lot of space um, in front of them wing positions. So I think, it would, yeah, it would be really difficult because he plays very narrow, so he won't be able to expose them wide areas. So this is probably the perfect um, tactic for Tide to play against Hughes Gorilla. OK, let's take a look at the bracket so you can see the first semi-final we've now got confirmed between a huge gorilla and Ty Walton. You can see it there. So one of those two guys will be in the final of the Play Like a Legend Season 2 championships. The other semi-final is still completely up for grabs. Next two quarterfinals are between iGamers Emmy, XL Gwigsy, and then we have uh, AAA Azik and Vitality Brian also to face each other in our next two quarterfinals. So uh, plenty more FIFA action still to come today. Uh, the first semi-final is going to be a really good one, I think. Huge Gorilla versus Ty. I'm looking forward to watching that one. But we've got the next two quarterfinals coming up next. We're going to have a quick break now, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Peggy 3. Throughout history, the boldest have dared to go further. They risk death, and in doing so, live on forever. What drives these few to the ends of the earth? The desire to discover something more. The search for something greater. The world is full of unanswered questions. Beyond all limits or reason, the answers await.
For some, discovering the secrets of the world is the only way to live.